In last week's episode, we finished the second leg of our major newbie passage from Italy to Corfu, sailing from the picturesque Diamante to the well-equipped and highly recommended Marina di Tropea. With a few days to spare, we stepped back in time and explored the architectural and cultural marvel that was Tropea Town. We had the pleasure of savoring local delicacies. We've got some calabrese sausage and it's absolutely delicious. So, very happy. Immersing in a bustling townscape and admiring the historical charm of the iconic Cathedral di Maria Santissima di Romania and the Santuario di Santa Maria di Ola. We also had the pleasure of exploring the turquoise bays and beaches that lay beneath the town atop the cliff face. Join us this week as we begin our journey to the vibrant town of Stromboli, an island that's as beautiful as it is exhilarating. We'll be wandering through its charming streets, basking in its local love, and uncovering the unique culture that makes this place so special. Have you ever dreamed of swimming in the waters of an active volcano? Probably not, but there is a first time for everything. Dive into the crystalline waters of Stromboli with us, where the heat from the Earth's core meets the coolness of the sea. From there, we'll embark on a captivating voyage to the pristine island of Panarain. As night falls, we'll wait patiently as we hope to bear witness to the fiery display of Sicario del Fuoco. <gasps> what? That like spat up. An awe-inspiring spectacle. A beautifully dangerous reminder of nature's true formidability. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Your support helps us greatly and means the entire world to the Trinity crew. Join us on a unique journey, embracing the fusion of culture, adventure, and nature's raw power in the heart of Italy's Aeolian Islands. We hope this episode reflects that and you find as much value in these remarkable bucket list experiences as we have. Let's dive right in and escape the ordinary together. Emerging with the dawn, we launched from Marina di Tropea. After a successful week at sea and with several long passage days to come, we decided to fill up our diesel tank. Our maiden refueling operation was a success. From there, we waved goodbye to our haven in Tropea and set our sights around 30 minutes down the coast. This captivating locale was a short trip from the marina and wasn't part of our original itinerary. However, in the face of such natural beauty, we decided to anchor there for the afternoon and ended up extending our stay overnight. As morning broke, the anchorage began bustling with a flurry of tourism speedboats and served as our cue to move on. We're going to the volcano islands today. We should get there and fly through. Some time for dinner. Our compass was next set for the iconic Stromboli Island. With the mainsail unfurled, we tackled the 30 nautical mile journey in five hours maintaining a favourable speed of 6.5 knots under the gentle push of a 10 knot wind. As Stromboli loomed closer, its silhouette gradually emerged from the hazy horizon. The closer we got, the more we could discern. Smoke billowing from the active volcano, vibrant greenery adorning its slopes, and a quaint town nestled at its base. The side of this town, cocooned by black sand beaches and accented with worn fishing boats, presented a charming tableau steeped in rich cultural tradition. Stromboli Volcano, located in the Aeolian Islands, is one of the world's few continuous active volcanoes and experiencing it firsthand was a definite highlight for us. It feels great. It feels like a scene out of Jurassic Park or Kong Island or something. It's best known for its almost constant state of eruption, which has been ongoing for an estimated 2,000 years. It's a geological phenomenon now referred to as Trombolian eruptions and is characterized by moderate bursts of explosively ejected lava. The near continuous volcanic fireworks have earned Stromboli the nickname the Lighthouse of the Mediterranean. A notable feature of the volcano is the Sicaria del Fuoco, or Stream of Fire. This large scar in the volcano's side, created by multiple collapses in the past, is where the majority of the volcanic material ends up, creating a vivid display particularly at night, a sight we hoped to see the next day from our second Aeolian destination, Panarea. Once in Stromboli, we chose to stay in a mooring field. The crew adeptly secured the buoy, and our smooth mooring operation successfully demonstrated the efficacy of our newly repaired bow thrusters. We got our bow thrusters fixed and they've been an absolute godsend for manoeuvring up around a mooring ball. Really, really handy, the two girls are on the front. Usually it's a bit of a struggle, but with the bell trusses we can sort of nose, left nose, right. Really, really good. It's one of those once in a lifetime experiences, isn't it? There's only one volcano. There's only one volcano. And behind this island, which is called Stromboli, there's another island called Panarea. After a refreshing swim and debrief of the day, we retreated to the boat for the evening. Absolute disgust is coming out of this. And they come in every hour, like, you know, 
So sad. The fish we did see was it's like in The Simpsons. Yeah. All the pollution going into the water. Mixed with the volcanic soil. Yeah. Something, something primordial happened. And they're trying to return to its home source. Dad's toenail beds. <laughs> I chilled out aboard while Martin and Sharon snuck away for a date night ashore in the town of Stromboli. As we wrapped up another unforgettable day, the promise of more adventures in this fascinating island left us eager for the dawn. As a new day dawned, we couldn't resist the allure of the balmy waters of Stromboli. Diving in the shadows of an active volcano was a uniquely thrilling experience, imbued with a small but still present dash of adrenaline. I won't lie, it did make me feel pretty cool, and yes it's true, I do all of my own stunts. Once we emerged from the water, we hopped aboard a speedboat operated by the same friendly folks we paid for our marine ball. They shared a fascinating tidbit that over the years, a significant number of Stromboli's residents had made the journey to Australia, with many of them settling down in Melbourne. This delightful coincidence added an extra layer of connection to our visit. Upon setting foot on the island, we were instantly charmed by its ambiance. In the absence of incoming ferries, the morning was pleasantly quiet. The morning stillness, unhurried pace, and laid-back residents all painted a vivid picture of island living. Beautiful gardens flourished outside nearly every house, painting the streets and vibrant hues of natural beauty. There you are, Taylor! Oh. After roaming the streets for a while, we stopped at the charming restaurant de El Caneto. It was here that we chanced upon a unique culinary delight gelato served in a brioche bun. This discovery, coupled with the best iced coffee I've ever had, made the cafe stop a memorable one. The friendly staff, along with the decor that echoed the relaxed vibes of Tijuana or Cancun, made for a fantastic atmosphere. We continued our exploration, engaging with local vendors and peoples, memorably purchasing some fresh nuts from a charming lady in her wooden cart. Best pistachios we've ever tasted, by the way. Now abuzz with tourists from the ferry, we made our way to the less populated shoreline. Mesmerized by the black sand beach and the intriguing array of volcanoes, rocks littering the coast in shallow waters. Stromboli is not just a natural marvel, but also a testament to the resilience of its inhabitants. Despite living under the constant shadow of volcanic activity, the residents have built a vibrant community that has thrived for centuries. The town is a crucial part of the Aeolian Islands appeal, with a thriving tourism industry that draws in visitors to experience a harmonious blend of natural beauty and leisurely island life. A blend that we of course were thrilled to be amongst. Basking in the allure of Stromboli with its comforting townscape and awe-striking volcano, we found ourselves entranced by the island's magic. That bird is like totally surfing right now. Cool. <laughs> oh, he heard me. He thinks you're funny, Kayla. Hang loose. <laughs> After a graceful morning, satisfied with our visit, we embarked on our voyage towards Panarea, the next location on our Aeolian Odyssey. Right. Clear. Slipped. Bye, Stromboli. You're fun and beautiful. Excited to potentially witness the more dangerous side of the ever-erupting Stromboli. Charting our course to Panarea, the second gem in the Aeolian archipelago, we embarked on a 10 nautical mile voyage that took us four and a half hours. Propelled by a mild breeze of five kilometers, we maintained a steady pace of six and a half knots. Panarea, dating back to the Bronze Age, is the smallest but also one of the oldest among the Aeolian islands. Its rich history, coupled with its exquisite natural beauty, makes it a magnetic draw for travelers worldwide. It is further famed for its idyllic anchorages. However, arriving later in the day, we found the safest spots for larger vessels like ours were already occupied. This situation underscored the importance of allowing ample time when navigating to popular destinations, especially when seeking free and secure anchorages. With that being said, we were left only with the option to pay for a marine ball. Although we were a bit reluctant to do so, we found solace in the security it offered amidst the frequent traffic in the area. As dusk descended and night fell, our chance to witness Stromboli's true nature was nearing. Anxiously we Waiting above deck, unsure of what we would or wouldn't encounter. Soon enough, we were treated to a distant spectacle. Stromboli's Sicaria del Fuoco. Though our vantage point was further away than the day prior, the sight of glowing lava cascading down the volcano's side and spitting into the air from its mouth was nothing short of phenomenal. Too magnificent, in fact, to be successfully captured on film. Yet, the display of the volcano was only one part of the stunning night scene in Panarea. Thanks to the sparse population of this town and its resulting minimal light pollution, 
revolution, the night sky came alive in a celestial ballet like we had never seen before. A grand display of stars adorned the sky, their sheer number and brilliance illuminating galaxies and constellations. It was a sight to behold and something we wouldn't soon forget. Tomorrow we set sail to the last stop in the Aeolian archipelago, Vulcano. This volcanic island provides a sailor's dream escape with its easily navigable waters and sheltered anchorage spots, while its rich marine life is a paradise waiting to be explored by those who love to combine sailing with snorkeling and beachcombing. We'll then chart our course towards Sia, our last port before the much-anticipated Messina Strait. This enchanting town in southern Italy is wrapped in layers of legend and mythology, said to be the home of the fearsome sea monster Scylla from Homer's Odyssey, while its beautiful castle Castello Rufo adds a fascinating medieval charm to our exploration. Are you ready? We can't wait to share these experiences with you. See you there, guys! Oh,